you're not satisfied with the status quo of Christianity and uh, pray for revival in your heart with the Lord uh, working great way. Good to see everybody tonight. Uh, glad you came out to worship the Lord with us. Let's have a word of prayer. Ask for his blessing on the service tonight. And uh, Brother Ray, would you uh, lift us up to the Lord? Hey, Father, let's say the Lord for safety today. Bless your safety today. And we want us to be the daddy of the house again tonight, Lord. And just do uh, this as we're here, Lord. Be the pastor's preaches. Give the Lord to say, Lord. Go ahead and write your church. Keep the devil out. Just uh, do this throughout the rest of the service. And bless the service. Amen. Amen. You can be seen in just a few announcements this evening. Uh, don't forget to pray for our missionary family of the week, the Price Family Missionaries to France. And they're in our bulletin also. And then also Mother Daughter Luncheon that Saturday, May the 6th at 1130 a.m. And so let Miss Opal know if you're coming out for that. It'll be a great time. And then our fifth Sunday fellowship is April the 30th. The church is going to provide... Fried chicken, roasted pork loin, and dinner rolls. Please bring a side dish or a dessert. Sign-up sheet will be on the entry table. So I believe it's back there. And so when you head out, if you're thinking of something, or maybe wait, next service. But uh, put down whatever you're going to bring. Sometimes we'll have an idea of uh, exactly what we got coming in. So be mindful of all those announcements that we got going on. Also, uh, let's mention here, we're going to go over our prayer list uh, in just a moment. But let me mention this figure, uh, just with our nursery Give everybody a heads up on that. Uh, with our nursery, one thing to keep in mind, the only uh, folks that are allowed in the nursery are babies, obviously, right? And, uh, or our nursery workers. And it's an insurance thing. We have to do background checks on every lady that serves in the nursery up there to be in there with the little kids. So if you haven't been through that process with our church, uh, and so I don't know that preacher, you would have given me your social security number, your address, and told me if you were a convicted felon or not. Right? So if you haven't done that, then uh, you're not on, you're, you're not on, the, uh, on the list. And so keep that in mind. It's an insurance uh, policy deal, safety thing. And so there are there is a nice padded chair outside the door of the nursery. Uh, ladies, if you needed to go up there and, you know, for whatever reason, with a, with a child or something, you're welcome to slip up there and sit down outside the nursery. But inside the nursery is just our nursery workers and the babies that are in there. So help us out with that. It's a security thing, safety insurance deal. I trust you understand. It's kind of like in our car line at school. Sometimes parents will say, well, so-and-so can pick up so-and-so. If we don't have that in writing, we can't just put a kid in the car because we got to know that we check driver's license, make sure this is the right person with the name and all. you got to be really safe today in this day and age which we're living in. So help us out with that. All right, very good. Uh, our prayer list, a couple things I want to mention tonight. First, let me say thank you for all your prayers. Uh, Monday night we had the prison service, went to the prison there in Mississippi. Had a great, uh, Brother Scott and I had a great time there with the inmates. 21 men came out for the service, which would, to me for a county side is pretty good. Usually it's a lot less than that, but I, what I'm used to. And uh, one of the guys walked in and he said, I've been listening to Brother Kurt since 2016. And he said, you're not Brother Kurt. And I said, you're right. I'm not Brother Kurt. I said, well, we're going to have a good time. And uh, come on in and have a seat and, you know, enjoy yourself. And so, uh, Brother Kurt, you must be making an impact on them, right? Uh, but uh, they were, it was a good time. We had a good service. I usually, when I, when I do go, it's typically on the state side. The county inmates, it's a little different. Uh, so the attitude's a little different because they haven't gotten their charges yet. So they're waiting to go before the judge, get their sentencing, find out exactly how many years they're going to be property of the state or if they're coming out or not. And so the county side, you get a little bit of a, you know, an attitude that you don't necessarily get on the state side because them guys are like, man, I got 60 years. I ain't going nowhere. It's a done deal. You know, I got 20 years, 10 years, whatever it may be. But we had a great service. 21 men came out. Uh, a third of those men, seven of them, stood up at the invitation and walked forward and got saved by the grace of God. And church, that's what it's all about. So thank you for the prayers. We had a phenomenal, I mean, it was, I didn't even get done praying when I, we got to the invitation. And when I opened my eyes and looked up, there were men standing beside me on both sides. And I said, Brother Scott. <laughs> and, uh, and so Brother, took, Brother, Brother Scott took them off to the side, dealt with them, and uh, they accepted the Lord. And so I hit them up before they got out of there and they told me they trusted Christ and they knew they had a home in heaven. So it was good. Thank you for the prayers. Uh, we definitely need it. All anytime our volunteers go out to the prison, we definitely need those prayers. Okay, just to mention these things real quickly. At the bottom of, of your prayer list are new things that have been mentioned. Uh, continue to pray for these. Miss uh, Mary Ann Farmer, physical needs. Miss Elizabeth's mom. Miss Jane Broadhead, that's Miss Wendy's mother. Pray for healing 
And then just for wisdom for Miss Wendy and all that they're going through right now, continue to pray for Miss Jamie's daughter, Pepper Gibbons, uh, spiritual needs, and also she's in rehab. And so just pray that God will give her victory over the addiction and she'll be able to come out of this place and just really be doing well and uh, give her life to the Lord. So pray for Pepper. And then also the Berg, Thomas, and Hall family, pray for their spiritual needs. And then Barbara Kirksky, uh, mom's friend, still dealing with the leg amputation and recovery. Uh, Dave and Melissa Price, it's our missionary family of the week, our missionaries to France. Keep them in prayer. And then Keith and Sonia, it's a homeless couple that Brother Austin ran into. And uh, they've got a lot of problems dealing with a lot of things. And so uh, Brother uh, Austin asked if we would uh, make to pray for them again tonight. And then uh, how many unspoken requests tonight? Unspoken prayer requests all over the building. And so uh, let's let's pray for those. Also at the bottom of the top part, you'll see there also Miss Margaret Russ, Brother Tony's uh, mom. She's uh, now she has permanent dialysis, and so still in the hospital. Pray for her, Miss Margaret, that the Lord will bless and just uh, work in her life. And then some of our normal prayers, or our regular prayers, are on there at the top. And so let's take a moment, and ask the Lord to uh, meet these needs. Father, we love you. Pray God that you would, Lord, just work in the hearts and lives of each of these individuals, Lord. Many physical needs and. Folks dealing with some things, Lord, that we can't even imagine sometimes, Father, that we haven't been through, we've never dealt with these kind of things. But, Lord, you know exactly where everybody's at. You know exactly the pain and the struggles that they're having. And, Father, we pray that you would strengthen them in this time that they're going through. Father, we pray for those that are sick tonight, unable to be here. We ask you to help them, Lord, and bless them. Uh, Lord, we lift up Miss Darlene to you. pray you just work in her body in a special way. And, uh, Father, we just pray for Miss Jane. We ask you, Lord, to... Be with her and all that she's going through, Lord. And I just pray for Miss Wendy and the family that you would strengthen Miss Wendy, Father. And, Lord, give her wisdom and uh, be with them, Father, as they help with Miss uh, with Miss Jane. We pray, God, that you'd be glorified there. Lord, we do lift up Pepper. We pray, God, that you'd just continue to bless there. Lord, what a miracle that she's even uh, at the rehab. I pray, God, that she would stay. And, Lord, that you would just be with those folks that are there. I pray that, Lord, even maybe a Christian nurse or worker that's there could really get in touch with Pepper and just be there to communicate with her and help her out spiritually. I pray, God, that you would give her victory over this addiction in her life. And, uh, Father, uh, some of us understand what that's about. And, uh, Lord, it's uh, def definitely a difficult thing to, Lord, kick habits. And, Lord, but we know by your grace and mercy, Lord, we can overcome all things. And I pray, God, that you would just help and meet the needs there. Father, we do pray for our missionary family of the week, the Price family, as they serve the Lord, serve you there in France. Pray, God, we bless them. Pray that many souls will be saved. And, Lord, we thank you for the men that were saved at the prison service. Uh, Lord, what a, blessed, what a blessed time we had. And we pray, God, that those men would come back for the next uh, church service, Lord, and maybe bring a visitor with them. And just pray, God, that, Lord, revival would even break out there in that place, Lord. And those men would begin to share the gospel, Lord, and talk about their faith. And, Lord, uh, help them to just to take a stand in such a difficult place as they're in. And I pray, God, that you would be with them. Stateside and the county side, be with our volunteers, Lord, to go out and, Lord, uh, don't get done until after 10 o'clock heading back home, Father. Give them, Lord, give them strength and, Lord, uh, provide for their needs, Lord. And I pray, God, that you keep them safe when they're traveling at night like that. And pray, Lord, that you would just bless them as they serve you faithfully. Lord, we do pray that you'd be with all the unspoken requests that we have, many things that, Lord, we're thinking about, we're praying about, and we just don't mention to other folks because they're private to us. And, uh, Lord, we ask you just to meet those needs, Lord. Strengthen us for your work, Father, and help us to be the Christians you've called us to be, Father. I pray that you bless our church and continue to bless our outreach efforts, Father. I pray that you would be with us tomorrow night as we head out, Lord, for our Thursday night visitation. We thank you for the young people that went out this evening with Brother Raven and Miss Molly and passing out gospel tracts, Lord. We pray that, Lord, uh, some of that seed would just take root and, uh, Lord, that uh, maybe someone would uh, just read those tracts, Father, and be born again and Thank you for that. Or maybe even visitors would show up as a result of it, Lord. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be mindful, Lord, that you are coming back for us. And, Lord, we need to be busy while we're waiting on your return, yeah. Father. We do love you. Thank you for your goodness. And just pray that you meet each of these needs that are on our list, Father. We pray that, Lord, I do lift up Miss Margaret. I pray you'll be with her. And, Lord, having to deal with the dialysis and all that she's going through. Father, be with the family and uh, be with the doctors that will be treating her. And, Lord, we just pray that you'd be glorified in each of our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Let's take just a moment, stand, shake a few hands, and then we'll get right back at it. So stand, come on, come on.
on her face today and told Brother Austin she's in a lot of pain. So keep Miss Carolyn in prayers. I believe it's the same lady that comes with him uh, to the night services. So keep her in prayer as well. All right, look, Chad. Let's go ahead and flip our hymn book to 411. 411, Solomon. That's the first, second, and the last. So far, James has been dealing with trials and tribulations and the temptations that we face and have to endure in our walk as a believer. 
and he's really showed us how to deal with those difficulties. Uh, if you're coming in new on this with us in the study of James, it's been pretty heavy. Like, I mean, he started right out the gate telling you, look, you got to stop. Basically, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. You got to stop complaining and whining when you hit the rough patches in life. And you need to just say thank you, Lord, and, and be grateful. That's not always easy, church. Uh, we, all, we all struggle with that. But we saw, we see it in the text. We know the Bible teaches us that we need to be that way. And we give us some things to work on. And when we find ourselves responding the wrong way, we know, okay, I need to work on this and pray about this. Uh, and, and the key is getting wisdom from God. He even said, if you lack wisdom, you ask it from the Lord and he'll, he'll give it to you. And so that's a good thing. But we have the tendency to uh, follow our nature. And our nature is to be, uh, you know, it, it's just to gripe and complain and not be happy with anything. Uh, and so, you know, and, and by nature, we're, we're selfish individuals. You know, we want what we want when we want it. We're used to the whole microwave mentality. You know, you stick it in, beep, 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 45 seconds. You pull it out like, wow, that's pretty quick. Not everything works that way. Amen. Listen, things in life don't just happen sometimes. There's, there's a process and you have to wait on things. And so that's the way it is. And so as a believer, we have to understand that we, we, we need patience. You know, we need to exercise patience. And just because we don't get our way is not cause for you and I to... Uh, show, you know, be spiritually immature, right? And pitch a, a temper tantrum. And so we, we, are, we are to seek the Lord and ask God to help us with uh, these difficulties. Now, in our text tonight, we're going to be in, uh, pick it up in verse number 13. But in our text tonight, James considers another aspect of temptation. Uh, the temptation that he's been talking about has to do with trials and uh, difficulties and, you know, the circumstances that we deal with. But the temptation that he's going to speak of tonight is literally the, the enticement or the lure to do evil or to do that which is sinful. And so really it's a, it's a whole other aspect of temptation. Same word, different variation of the word is used in the text. I will say something about that in a minute. Uh, but I really, I really believe that, uh, that this message from James tonight it really could be a game changer in our lives as a believer. If you've ever played sports and, you know, maybe a, all of a sudden you get a new guy or you get a new girl on the volleyball team and they show up and you're like, man, okay, this guy, he's a ringer. I mean, this guy hits everything, makes everything. You know, he's 6'4". This is money, right? And, 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 and the team might think to themselves, but the coach might say, this, is, this guy's a game changer. Like, I mean, yeah, we're not struggling. Next time we play Walker Springs, we're going to beat the eyeball team, you know, and, and we're going to smile and, you know, love it, right? Uh, and so you just... Sometimes there's things that, you know, we would say they're a game changer. They're really going to make a huge difference in what we're doing and help us to do better and be better or whatever. And so spiritually, I really think that the text tonight is a game changer. And, and even just studying this message and, and, and the verses, I just was reminded that, man, this, is, there's, this right here could really help us going forward spiritually about making bad decisions when it comes to temptation. And for our young people... If they will really take to heart what we're going to see tonight from the scripture, it could set them up. I mean, think about this, parents, adults. Could you imagine going through life, all right, with, with no desire, with no desire to do that which is sinful? Can you even imagine that? It's kind of hard to imagine, Brother, Brother Jody. And there's a reason why it's hard for you and I to imagine, some of us to imagine this. And, and basically, it's because of our experiences. And we're going to see that from the book of James. Well, our young people are in a position where most of our young people, the average young person in the Christian church, is in a position where they don't have the experiences that you and I have. Okay, They're not struggling with some of the same things that we may struggle with because to them it's very foreign. right? They, 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 they've never been there, never done that, don't have a t-shirt. And so far, they hadn't asked for one, okay? And so the, the text that I really believe could just be a game changer for us, and I think it can really help us. So let's, uh, let me stop giving an introduction and let's get started. So let's all stand if you're able, James chapter 1, and uh, look down at verse number 8. We're going to start, we'll read a few verses. Verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all of his, all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. When we understood last week that meant, that meant someone who is of... Uh, lesser financial ability, okay? Verse 10. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withered the grass and the flower thereof falleth. 
It says, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich of man fade away in his ways. In other words, money don't always last a long time. Verse 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And at verse number 12, it literally shifts gears in the text. Verse number 12 is that's the that is the you know the, that's the last verse there uh, in regards to the you know struggles and, and and trials and tribulations that we face. The next verse deals with being tempted to do evil. Let's pray. Father, bless our time around your word, Lord. I pray God you'd help us to understand it. And Father, I pray that you would encourage us and Lord help our young people to understand how important this is tonight that we would look at. Even us adults, Father, there's a lot of experiences that we do have and uh, Father, they don't, those things do not have to control us and lead us through life. But, uh, Father, it, it would really help us as parents to understand how this process works so that we can protect our kids and set them up for spiritual success, Father. I pray you bless the reading of your word tonight. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. All right, verse 13. Uh, and this is just some great verses here. And again, it's heavy. It's, it's meat. It's not the milk of the word. This is stuff that hits you right between the eyes, right? This is, uh, man, this is this is really just uh, stuff that we deal with and we need to understand. Look at verse number 13. James says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Look at the end of the verse. Neither tempteth he any man. So clearly the thought changes, right? So for 12 verses, James has been talking about temptation and how God allows this and how you're expected to endure it and get through it. And then you hit verse 13 and it says, well, well God tempted no man. Well, so some might would say, well, do we have a contradiction? I mean, what is James talking about? Well, it's because the thought changes. The aspect of temptation is different in verse number 13. Verse, the first 12 verses imply temptations as in trials but here, James is talking about something that does not come from God. All right? This kind of temptation is not from the Lord. The word temptation, church, in verse 13, very interesting. It is a verbal derivative of the word temptation, the exact same word that's in verse number 12. You say, well, but Tim, what's the difference? Well, if you look at the Greek, there's a, the, the spelling it, it looks a little different, but the biggest way to understand it is this. The word in verse number 13 is as in a negative sense, right? Okay? And so it's, it's, it's different the way this word is used. And so James is talking about being enticed to sin or enticed to do evil. Think about it. Would, would God ever tempt you to go rob a bank? Since everybody wants to rob banks, it seems like you go sold. No, right? Would God tempt you to commit adultery? Right? I guess Brother Kurt agrees with that. No, he wouldn't tempt you to commit adultery. Would God, hey young people, this is for you. Would God tempt you to cheat on your house with this? But Ted said, no, sir. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Thank you for the Bob. No, God would tempt you to do that. So he's talking about being tempted to do evil, tempted to sin. And so think about this, all right? James gives us two strong biblical truths here regarding the temptation to do something that is sinful or evil. Think about the two things that he gives us in this verse, uh, verse number 13. He says, for God cannot be tempted. All right, so think about this, okay? That's amazing. Think about this. God Almighty cannot be tempted to do sinful things like you and I can. That makes sense, you know? And so, when, when, uh, there, there's, no, there, there's no temptation to do evil for God, okay? God cannot, well, why can't he do evil? Why can't God sin? That's exactly right. He's holy. But I, we're going to add to it, Brother Kirk, because that is exactly, that's true. He's not just holy. God is he's perfect. He is thrice holy, the Bible says. Holy, 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 right? That's, friend, listen. Holy's great, okay? But God Almighty isn't just holy. He's holy, holy, holy. He cannot be tempted to do that which is sinful or evil. He cannot because he is a thrice holy God. So keep that in your mind. And so he can't be tempted to do something that is sinful. But also James says, neither tempted he any man. 
And so because God is infinitely holy, He's thrice holy, He has never and will never tempt any person to do that which He cannot be tempted to do. Think about that. God Almighty will never tempt you to do something bad. In other words, you say, well, God made me do it. Oh, you're a liar. You know? Why'd you rob that bank? God told me, you know, here's people that said, they said, well, God told me to do it. Friend, listen, if it is something that is sinful, ungodly, against the Scriptures, God did not tell them to do that, okay? God doesn't do that. And, and, and you take the radical, there, there's even, there's radical Christians, church. There are, or I should say so-called Christians. There's radical religious people, right? There's people that will go and they'll take bombs and blow up an abortion clinic and say, God told me to do it. That's a lie, friend. That is a lie. Well, well, well abortion bad, Brother Tim. Okay, murdering people is not bad. I mean, let, let's talk about it. One thing we're, the only thing we're, uh, we're, 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 there's a difference here is the age of the person that's dying. Okay? So when someone says, God told me to do it, and it's something that is sinful or evil, that's not the Lord. The, James is very clear. Two solid things here, two solid truths. God cannot be tempted to do evil. And because of his, uh, because of being thrice holy, all right, he will never tempt or, or tell someone to do that which is sinful or evil. Now, look at the next verse, verse 14. James goes on. He said, but every man. This, this right here is where the rubber meets the road. But every man is tempted. Now, here's that same word, okay? The, the word tempted as in, in a negative sense, a, uh, a, a, a lure to do that which is sinful or evil. But every man is tempted. Now, notice what it says when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Now, James explains to us where such temptation actually comes from. If God doesn't tell me to do it, it's not the Holy Spirit within me that tells me to do it, okay? If it's not God, then where, is, where does this temptation come from? I mean, where did I get the idea to go wrong with that, Brother Tony? I mean, you didn't call me and tell me to do it, right? But where did I get the idea to go off and get drunk, right? Where did I get the idea to, to look at pornography? Where did I get the idea or the temptation to cheat on my algebra test or my grammar test? Where did it come from? If it didn't come from God, James says every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now, church, James makes it crystal clear that we are being lured away by our own lusts. What the Bible says, okay, we're being lured away by our own lusts. Now, we, we, you got to keep this in mind. We have a robe of flesh, right? We have a robe of flesh that, that, that doesn't get saved, okay? It, it's, it's never been saved. It's not going to get saved. And, 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 you, and you don't get to take off the robe of flesh until you leave this world and you go be with the Lord for eternity, right? Until you get your glorified body. So until then, you wear this robe of flesh, and guess what? It's evil, right? I mean, it just... By nature, it wants to do that which is not right. This is against God. And so we have this robe of flesh, and so we have a sinful nature that will always be with us until we go home to be with the Lord. And so, and, and, and so because of it, there are times where we, we go through this temptation, and we are tempted to do that which is evil or sinful. And I would even say this, right? Uh, we can't always blame it on the devil. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. The, the devil will use this against us, okay, what we're going to look at. But it can't always blame it on the devil, you know. The devil made me do it. Why'd you hit your sister? The devil made me do it. Well, we might need to pray over that home, right? What's the devil doing in there? You know? Why, why did you kick the cat? The devil. No, that might have been Jesus. Don't kick me. That was not the Lord. The devil made me do it. No, it didn't. Listen. Uh, and so we got to be careful even when we blame uh, the forces of hell. And so James says every man is... Tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. And so, church, we'll never get away from this robe of flesh. It is part of our nature that our great, 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 great grandfather Adam passed down to us. And uh, again, it'll only be done away with when we go home to be with the Lord. Now, James tackles the root cause of the temptation that's in our lives. And he places the blame squarely on human lust. He literally just says, Boom, this is it. No if, ands, or much about it. You know, the, the blame is because of the lust that is within our bodies and uh, in, in our mind. It's, our, it's this old, this sinful nature, okay? He puts the blame exactly where it should be. Now, notice the word lust in verse number 14. Very interesting word. Very interesting word. Now, when you hear the word lust, when you hear that word, 
when you hear that word, typically we associate the word lust with what type of behavior? Sexual, immoral, sensual. That's what we I mean just do. In our, in our society, when you hear the word lust, you're thinking, okay, that's, that's sensual, that's bad, that's not good, you know, that's immoral. Okay, that's not the meaning of the word in the verse here, okay? It's not just talking about sensual or, you know, physical, sexual type things, you know, sinful things. That's not the meaning of the word, all right, in the text here. He says, when he's drawn away of his own lust. Now, granted, the sensual side of it is part of it, okay? But it's not. Well, that's not all that he's saying here. The word lust here, think about this. The, the word translated as lust, it literally refers to this. Desires of any nature. Go hunting. Go fishing. Play golf. Go shopping, ladies. Go window shopping. Go out to eat. Desire to have your, your, your diet coke in the morning when you wake up. Desire to have your cup of coffee when you wake up. Desire to have your energy drinks throughout the day. Desire to read your certain magazine that you love so much. Think about it. That word lust is not just talking about sensual type things. He's saying the desire of any nature, right? And so you've got to keep that in mind to understand you know, exactly what James is, is getting to here. He says that when we are drawn away, don't miss this, of our own lust, here it is, not just sensual things, but our own, our own very own desires to do something that we enjoy, is what he's saying. And so church, let's, let's put all this together here. I mean, this is really, uh, this is so helpful for us spiritually. I mean, think about this. We, we all have desires to do things. And why do we have desires to do things? Why would I, I, I personally enjoy this, you may not enjoy it. Why would Brother Tim have a desire to climb 20 foot up a pine tree and a tree climber risking my life. Okay, I don't even wear, I don't even wear like a safety harness on there. I know they tell you to, but I don't, okay? It may kill me one day. I hope not. But, you know, at, at 4.45 in the morning and it's 28 degrees outside and my nose is numb and my ears are numb and I can't feel my toes and I'm just sitting there in this tree and it's 4.45 in the morning. I can't even see in front of me, right? Why would I? <laughs> because of what could happen from then, right? You know? And, and, and here's the reason. The reason why I desire that is because I like that. Okay? Church, we only desire that which we like, okay? There's some sports. I, I, I went to the teams with the teams, we took the teams to uh, camp one summer. Mount Moriah at, uh, up in Powell, Tennessee, Crown, Crown Bible College. And so they, were, they had soccer as an event. Listen, this fat boy got up there. See, I can say it, but we'll do it. I can call myself fat boy. That's okay. He can't call me fat boy. Uh, you know, th th this big boy got out there playing soccer, and I thought I was going to die. Like, I'm like, you, you, nobody should run up and down the field like that and never stop. You've got to stop for a break. I literally was sucking wind, and I thought I was going to die at team camp. And you know what I thought after that game of soccer? I'll be up there, play it again. I'll watch them play out here. Ask them how many times Brother Tim's been out there and played soccer with them. They will tell you, zero, because I don't like it, right? Now, I'll shoot some hoops with them. I'll play some football with them. I'll play volleyball. We, here this search one. this is, we only do the things, we only desire the things that we like to do, okay? Keep that in your mind. It's very important to understanding the, really the gravity of what James is talking about. I mean, ladies, you only go shopping because you like to shop, right? You only watch QVC a thousand hours a day because you like to watch QVC. You only watch the cooking channel. I mean, how many recipes, do you have like all these recipes memorized or something? You know, how many recipes can you watch them cook on television? But you like that, so therefore you desire that, right? You don't desire to watch the, the hunting channel, you know, with me. You, you can care less about it. You, you, don't, you don't see no enjoyment in, in, in watching that bandit get shot and just roll over, you know. Man, I love it. Like, that's amazing, okay? You don't desire that because you don't like that. You do desire the things that you like, all right? Keep that in mind, okay? And so, uh, you know, Think about temptation. That was kind of applied to really the really 
the idea of staying away from these sinful things. Okay? Think about the temptation to do evil. Obviously, nothing wrong with hunting and fishing and lady shopping unless you're like breaking the bank or something and your husband said, honey, don't spend no more. We might to go broke, okay? You need to stop, okay? Pump the brakes, but you don't need a new handbag every two weeks, okay? And so if, if something becomes an idol or distraction, yes, those things, even golfing and hunting and fishing, whatever can be sinful. Uh, but, but think about this, okay? What about this? What about, what about the temptation to do wrong? Where does that desire come from? Where does the desire to, to do that which is evil? If I have the desire to go hunting because I like to hunt, if I have the desire to play basketball because I like to play basketball, where does the temptation come from to curse and swear? Brother Joe, that's exactly right. And I challenge you, I was in the United States Army, and some of you guys, and you, you, you've been in the military, you understand this. Listen, you're talking about some foul-mouthed individuals, right? And I'm telling you this, and you ask me, you find you a lost man that uses profanity, like just cusses up a blue fog, he will tell you he likes using those words, right? He absolutely likes using them. And people that use them, and, 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 you know, I mean, and it just flows out, right? I mean, you just, you go hunt every time you get a chance, you go fishing every time you get a chance, you shop every time you get a chance, and you're using profanity and cursing and swearing every time you get a chance. They do it because they like to do it. I'm telling them. They like to do it. Well, where did that come from, okay? It's, it's, it's a desire that we have within us, okay? Where does the temptation, you know, come from uh, to be unkind to somebody and to be mean to somebody? Where does it come from, right? Why, why is a bully a bully? I mean, why, why, why does a guy, you know... Be mean, why, is, why is someone mean-spirited towards somebody else and, 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 and they're just aggressive and, they, and they, they, they hurt people? And Why do they do that? Listen to me. They like doing that. Okay? Now, preacher, there's no way that... You, you, don't get to, you don't get to pick how this works, right? If it works for the things you eat and the entertainment that you have and the hobbies that you have, I'm telling you, it's the same exact process for the bad things in life. We just don't want to admit it, right? We don't want to pay. Well, you mean I like, you know, I like beer? I like beer? I like cigarettes? Yes, you do, okay? And so because of that, that's where the temptation comes from. I promise you. He says it. He puts the blame squarely on you and I in verse 14. He said, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Not, not sexual, sensual things just per se. Any desire of any nature, he said, and it comes from within. Where does the temptation, you know, uh, come from these things? It's from within. Think about this, okay? I do not like salad. I even, listen, when I was typing this out, I had to type in Google what comes in a salad, Brother Robert. I literally typed that in my Google search engine and hit boom. Because all I could remember was lettuce and tomatoes, right? But I needed a third one. I, I, I thought, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember open them. They love that stuff. And I'm like... There's got to be something. I thought cheese, but cheese, I like cheese, so I couldn't say cheese, right? I like ranch dressing, so I couldn't say ranch dressing. So I'm like, i got to have a third thing that's in salad that I don't like. And I'm like, okay, lettuce. I thought carrots, but I don't remember seeing carrots in their salads. Cucumbers. Bing! And I can't stand them, right? I mean, I like pickles, not cucumbers. That don't make any sense, right? Uh, that's backwards. Uh, and so I don't like salad. I have no desire to eat a salad. None, right? I mean, I promise you, uh, you know, I, I just, it, 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 I don't even, I mean, broccoli and vegetables, I like beans and peas, and that's it. But salad and leafy vegetables, ugh, like I, I would rather lick this, this concrete right here. I literally do not want it in my mouth, okay? I loathe it, right? But tiramisu, hmm, five, right? Tiramisu, man. Son, listen. Oh, tiramisu, late fingers saturated in espresso. Oh, man. With some Mars Capone cream in on top of it. Dusted with some uh, cocoa powder. Oh, man. And you put you a cup of coffee beside it. Let me tell you what. If you've never had tiramisu, I would encourage you to try it. Hey, listen. I remember, I remember mom taking us to all. It was a treat when we were kids. You had to go out to eat, you know. Our, our kids nowadays are, are, are spoiled rotten. And I, I shouldn't say that bad thing. That's, that don't sound right. Our kids today have a lot more privileges than we did growing up, okay? I, I, 
after this pork cotton to, to exist. But going out to eat was a big deal. So mom would say, we would get to go to the Olive Garden, and that was huge, right? I mean, when mom took us to the Olive Garden, that was a big deal, okay? So mom would take cash out of the Olive Garden, and I remember, well, I didn't even know what it was, but one time we got tiramisu. And, I, and at first I looked at him like, ah, he kind of looks terrible, you know, doesn't look to be good about that. And friend, let me tell you what, I took one bite of it, and I was hooked. Like, dude, I'll, I'll eat the whole thing, okay? And I wanted more of it, all right? And so, guess what I still like today? Tiramisu, all right? Think about this. Think about this. Some of you are getting ready to connect some dots. I tried it. I tasted it. And I liked it. And I'm still addicted to it today. I want more of it, okay? But I still don't like salad. And I don't desire salad. I don't desire broccoli. I don't like broccoli. Now, here's the danger of this church. Think with me for a minute. James says, when, 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 when he is drawn away of his own lust, that temptation, that desire to whatever's within him, within your body, everybody's desire is different, okay? Now, think about the negative side of this. When I was lost, and I'm not bragging on my sin, God knows my heart. I'm not bragging on my sin. Young people, do not take, don't, don't. It would be foolish for you to hear what I'm about to say and think that, oh, well, that's cool or something, okay? Please do not look at this the wrong way or hear this the wrong way. When I was lost, I drank alcohol, all right? And I would hear people say, I can't stand the way beer tastes. I don't like it. Well, I was one of those guys that liked the way beer tasted. I, I mean, it tasted good to me. I wanted more of it. It was like the tiramisu. I didn't just drink it because of the effect that it made, how it made me feel. I literally liked it. I would drink harder beverages, alcohol beverages, and I literally liked the way they tasted, okay? Had a taste in my mouth. And guess what? That desire, guess what? That desire, that light just doesn't go away. It's not like you can just flip a switch and say, well, I don't like to go here anymore. I can't just say, I don't like to go here in the suitcase. I'm done with tiramisu. I don't like tiramisu. Where's the tiramisu? Somebody buy one, please, right? Literally, when I go to the store in the bakery, I'm always on the lookout for the little tiramisu. I'm like, and so it doesn't, think about it, it's within me, okay? And everybody's desires are different sometimes, and to different degrees sometimes. The, the other, and I'm not even going to go down the list, because I mean, the, the list is very ugly and nasty and sinful, but a lot of those things and a lot of those wicked things that's in this world, think with me, church, hey, our flesh absolutely likes it. We like the way it tastes. We like the way it smells. We like the way it feels. We like the way it makes us feel. We literally enjoy it, okay? And that desire is in us, okay? And so James says, you are tempted when, when we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lust, our own desires. Of, uh, you know, and, and, and it, it, this, is the, this is the key to this. It, the process, it all begins with a taste, with a taste. If I had never tasted a tiramisu, I wouldn't stand here tonight and be addicted to tiramisu. It doesn't work that way, right? Uh, we had a family in our church at the time. They were from uh, Rhode Island, and, or Massachusetts, I believe. And uh, they were all about lobsters. Man, they had lobsters. They had, they had me and a bunch of families in the church over. And they, bought, they had fresh lobster flown in from wherever, Massachusetts or Rhode Island. I can't remember what the state it was. Fresh lobster. I've never tried it before, right? And they, and they spent big bucks on this. I mean, big old lobsters. And I'm thinking, ah, I don't know if I like this or not. They look weird. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. And so I ate it, and I thought, eh, like that, that just didn't do it for me, man. I'd rather have some fried fish and some fried shrimp, you know. But the lobster, now Opal likes them. But me, I tried it, and I was like, I, I can do without that, and I could care less if I ever have another piece of lobster the rest of my life, okay? But I did taste it, and, and my me personally did not like that. And I don't crave lobster today. I don't care about lobster. You can eat all the lobster you want. I'm not envious of you. I can care less, right? And so when it starts with that taste, it's a process. No matter what it is in life. And so you, you think you think about kids. And think about this. We we teach, this is sad, and we've all done this. We have taught our kids this since they were born. They sit at the table as two-year-olds, they're off the bottle, hopefully by then, or right around whatever age it is. I don't remember, but they're at the table, and this is what we say to them. You put broccoli in front of them. You put spinach or whatever, vegetables. I mean, this is what we say to them. Just try it. Just taste it. If you'll just eat one bite, I know you'll like it. Don't we say that, Mom and Dad? Think about it. 
the process is the same with all of this stuff. And that's what we say. Just try it. Well, why are you telling them that? Because in your mind, you know, if they will just taste it once, maybe they'll even take a liking to it. They might not like it at first, and, but if I give it to them every day, they may develop a taste for it. And so that process is the exact same thing with spiritual matters. The exact same thing. Oh, I get it. We're not saying, hey, try the beer, taste the beer. Hey, hey, try, 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 try doing this over here and taste that over there. We're not doing that to them with, with sinful, wicked things, but the process is exactly the same. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean and, and it starts with that one time. Just try it, little junkie. You'll like this. Taste your, eat those beans, eat that cabbage, eat that spinach. You'll enjoy it, but they might not enjoy it, right? We never, us personally, we never forced our kids to eat things they didn't like because we just, Believe that they, we all have different palates, and I know I'm pretty picky, so I hate to make my son eat something that I'm not willing to eat, right? I can't tell my son to eat your broccoli because I can't stand it, you know? Go plant it in the backyard, maybe it'll grow something. Don't eat it, you know? And so, but when it comes to, when it comes to the simple things, this is what happens. It's just one try. What does the dope dealer say? Just one. What, what, yeah, what does the guy at school say? Hey, just drink one beer. You might like it. You never tried it. Just try it once, you know. Hey, just take one hit off that joint. Just take one hit. You might like it. You don't know. Hey, just start one line, you know. It's no big deal. Just, just try it one time. It, it, it can't hurt you. One time's not that big of a deal. But friend, listen. All it takes is one taste. One taste. And then once you taste it, they with me now. If you like it, and with drugs and alcohol, typically we do because of the feeling that it gives you, that desire to have that is now within you. That's the truth of the matter, friend. I've been saved since August of 1998, and let me tell you what, friend, it's only by the grace of God and, and, and staying close to the Lord. I'm a good sinner, right? If I were to walk away from God today and throw my Bible in the trash can and just walk away from Christianity, I could get in a lot of trouble very quick. Because my nature and the appetites that I have within me from a wicked, ungodly life as a young person and as a young adult and being in the army, for listen, i got to stay close to Jesus Christ. Okay? And the reality is we all should. Okay? Because church... And, and, and young people, this is my challenge for you. This, I hope you got to get this. You don't have to try it one time. You don't have to, right? You, it, 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 it's not like shopping for a car and you say, okay, I need to try all these answers and I like the best. I get it. That's okay, right? Drive a few of them. But when it comes to the sinful things in this world, when it comes to drugs and alcohol and immorality, hey, I can tell you without you trying it, your body will like it. And then once the taste is there, you will struggle with it, but by the grace of God, you will fight that battle until God calls you out of this place. And many of you here tonight, will uh, you know I'm telling the absolute truth. You know it. And so parents, think with me. That's why it's so important that we, sh we protect and we shield our young people. And that's why it's so important that we're not okay with them just going out to a party. And Well, you just go to the prom and, and you dance with that girl, get close to her, and let your body touch her body. Friend, listen, their flesh is going to like it. And once they get a taste for it, they're going to want more and more and more. And say, so, well, it's okay, preacher. They're trying to figure themselves out. You know, they're young and they're growing up. And yeah, and it's very foolish because now we are, we are setting our young people up for failure. They're going to have addictions. They're going to have struggles as a young adult, as an adult one day, that could have been avoided if we if they had just never tasted it. Never tasted it. There is nothing wrong when someone can say, I have never put alcohol in my lips. That's, that's a miracle. That's a blessing. Okay? Nothing wrong for a young person to say, I, 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 I'm still pure. I have not lost my virginity. I am saving that until I get married. That's a good thing, friend. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Shame on any young person or any parent or anybody in this world that would look at that and say, ha, huh, you're one of those, and make fun of that and mock that. Shame on them. I would to God that we, some of us in here, had that type of upbringing. I mean, think about it. We wouldn't be struggling with some stuff we struggle with. And so you don't have to have that one try. I mean, there's young people today that struggle with some pretty ungodly things all because they just had to try it one time. Drug, alcohol addiction. 
young people with, with kids out of wedlock. All because we've just got to try it one time. I just want to taste it. And it costs them more than they ever realize. And parents, they don't have to have the taste in the first place. Look at the end of verse 14. Look at this. He said, in verse 14, he said, and entice. This is amazing. And entice. The word entice means this. To catch by using bait. Think about it. You remember the last fish you caught? You remember the last time you, I mean, now it's legal in Alabama. Last year we, we killed uh, fellas and mine. We had corn out there because it's legal, right? I shot, we shot them jokers with a pile of corn in front of us. Because the state of Alabama said you can do it. So we did it, right? I mean, the last fish we caught, I can't ever, I can't remember catching a fish with a hook without nothing on it. I mean, that just, I guess everybody gets lucky every now and again, but that'd be nice even if you just go down there and throw some hooks out and just come back with a mess of fish. Typically, you got to have bait, right? And so the Bible says in verse 14, he said, every man is tempted, all right, when he's drawn away of his own lust or his own desires of any nature. Don't just put sensual things there. He said, and then in verse 14, he says, and entice. In other words, you're drawn away because of the desire, and then all of a sudden now, think with me, just like that fish that has been caught by using bait, you have been caught just like you bait. bait. And guess where the bait came from? Within. Within. Because the taste was there. Why does a man go off in adultery on his wife? Why does a woman leave her husband in adultery? And, and, and why does that happen? Why does, why does a man you know, struggle with alcohol addiction and he's saved and he knows the Lord and, he, and you know, he's got a church he belongs to? Why does he struggle with drugs? Because he's been drawn away because of his desires. He's been enticed. He's been caught with the, his own bait, if you will, and he's not walking close to the Lord. And so that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Verse number 14, and in ties. Church, we cannot blame the devil. We cannot blame God. Uh, you know, it, it, it come, these temptations, these desires come from unholy you know, desires within us. Look at verse 15. Real quickly, I've got to wrap this up. Then when lust hath conceived, he uses the analogy of childbirth, okay? Conception, then you have a baby is born. We understand that. Then when lust hath conceived, look what it brings forth. Look what the baby is. Sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, the Bible says in verse number 15. So I think God's Word declares that when we act on the lust or our desires we have, when we give in, when we just try it, there will be consequences. We don't get to rewrite that, that, that principle, okay? We don't get to say, well, I'm going to try it, but there's not going to be any consequences. You're crazy. There will absolutely be consequences. And so he said, try it and do it. There's going to be a result. There's going to be consequences. And this all goes back to the garden. Think with me. Genesis 2.17. All right? The, 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 the temptation was, okay, don't, you know, don't eat of that. God said, not eat of that. Well, the devil says, hey, you know, go try it. It's not going to hurt you, you know. But what did God say? God said, if you eat of that, Adam and Eve, he said, thou shalt surely die. Not your mind, not possibly. He says, go kill you. You, you eat of that, and it's going to absolutely kill you. And what did they do? They ate, they partook of it, and immediately they died spiritually, and, and over the process of time, they even died physically because of it. Church, there are consequences to these desires that we have within and being caught like a fish with bait, being enticed, okay? Let me, let me help us out for a minute. You're not going to get rid of the, you're not going to get rid of the temptation. All right? You've got to understand that. You're not going to get rid of the temptation. The temptation will be there until the day you die, right? Because, again, because of trying to tear the shoe at Olive Garden. Because of tasting that lobster at the Sylvia's house. I don't care for it. I don't want it. Right? I didn't like it, right? And now you fill in the blank with other things. Because the taste is there, the temptation is not going anywhere. But you don't have to be the you can you, 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 you can shun the bait, if you will. You can know, okay, listen, I have a tendency to maybe fly off the handle and say being in hurtful things. So I need to stay close to the Lord and ask God to help me while I'm out and ask God to help me not say mean and hurtful things. And maybe you have a tendency to really want to consume alcohol and drugs. Listen, you got to stay a, a million miles away from that stuff, friend. you got to stay way away from it. You can't even get close to it or you're going to get caught. You're going to be enticed by being caught with faith just like that fish. And so when we make the choice of disobedience, it always brings about a consequence.
consequence, right? It always brings about a consequence. Now, look at this. Look, look, at, look at verse number 16, and we're done. I want you to see this. Look, look how offensive it is. He said, do not err, my beloved brethren. He tells them this, and then he literally says, the word err literally means to be deceived. He says, listen, don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Deceived about what? You need to remember this, that God cannot be tempted with evil. That God will never tempt you with evil, right? And, and you need to understand that sin in itself is inherently bad for you, and there are consequences. And once you get the taste in your mouth, you may absolutely struggle with it. And it may be like lobster to say, that beer tasted so bad, I, I could care less about everything in other in my life. But then you might try another flavor or another beverage and say, I kind of like that one. And then, and then church, before you know it, listen, now the desire's there. And friend, he says, do not err, my beloved brethren. We need to understand that this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Parents, every time you tell your little kids, just try it. Be reminded that sinful things and worldly things is just like that. Just try it. Just try it. Just try it. Just try it. Just taste it. Just go there once. Just try it out one time. How about let's keep them from trying it? How about we say, by the grace of God, I'm going to raise some sheltered kids. Hey, we're not going to try the world stuff. We don't need to, to, to try the world to know the world's bad. i got a book here, the Bible, that tells me the world's ungodly. That tells me this place is controlled by the, the spiritual wickedness in high places. And the prince of the power of the air, the devil, is the one that's kind of running the show right now. On a short leash by God, obviously. You understand that. I don't have to try all that stuff to know that it's bad. Now, I have tried some things that are no bad, and I wish I'd have never tried them. If I could turn back the clock and undo some things, I would have done a whole lot. A whole lot. A whole lot. And many of us would. But young people, listen. You don't have to try. You don't have to try. Maybe a teenager here tonight, and you done tried it. You done tried it. You done tasted it. You know what it feels like. You know what it tastes like. You know what it smells like. You know how it makes you feel. Listen to me. Listen, listen to Brother Tim. You will always struggle with that. Trust me. Guys, you will always struggle with it. There's not a man in here to tell you anything different than that. I promise you. Some of you have not tried it, tasted it, touched it, haven't been there, haven't had one. You don't need one. Stay away from it. And I would even say this. Be careful about what you watch on that little devil device that we carry around every day. Because, think with me now, think with me, parents, to a certain degree, we're tasting it and trying it by watching it. I'm telling you, oh, you're going to get the full-on experience, but there's something in this sinful nature that says, you might like that. That's, that, that looks pretty good. You are trying to get a chance, you know? And this is what Satan's going to do. Satan is not the, he's, we can't blame him all the time, but he will use this process against us. In other words, he knows what my weakness is, right? He knows what your weakness is. He knows that I like tiramisu. So guess what I'm going to see every time I go to the bakery? Tiramisu, right? I don't see nothing else in there but tiramisu because that's all I care about, right? And so he will use these things against us, but we can't blame him. And Paul said that if we would walk in the Spirit, we would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so church, the key, young people, the key, Stay close to the Lord and just realize, just because you, and, and you may hear other people say, well, I've done this and I've tried that, and they're bragging, listen, they're bragging and talking about all they've accomplished and done, and they, they've been here and done that, and these other teenagers, and they're worldly and ungodly, and they think it's cool. But I promise you, when, 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 when it really comes down to it, they are not happy about the choices they've made. And if they could go back and undo it, they probably would. Because now they're going to fight a battle for a long time. Young people, you don't have to fight that battle. Just and back in the days, the, the slogan was for drugs, just say no, right? And uh, just don't try it, right? Don't try because you think absolutely like it, and then it's a battle. It's a battle. It's a battle. And so church tonight, I believe it's a game changer because just think about how this process works. And remember, this lust is not just sensual things. It's any desire of any nature, right? It could be anything you want to name. And we've got to guard against these desires that we have within us. Stay close to the Lord. Ask God to give us victory. And when, and when that when that bait pops up, and listen, we begin to get enticed, boy, you better take off running. You know, you better head to the Lord and get in your prayer closet and say, God, help me, God, protect me. 
because it can cause a lot of problems in our life as a believer. Let's stand. We have time for invitation. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want to ask you an important question. Maybe you're here tonight. I don't always ask for a show of hands, but I feel that too tonight. Maybe you're here this evening and say, Brother Tim, there's some things, there's some desires within me that I'm battling, I'm struggling to preach It seems like the devil throws it at me all the time. It seems like the world throws it at me. But Tim, I just, would you pray for me that I would take this message and what I've heard and I would apply it to my life and understand that uh, I can't have victory through Jesus. I can, I can be on the straight and narrow and live for the Lord. Preacher, would you pray for me that I would just get victory over some of these things? That's you tonight that just looking at God bless you all over. God bless you all over. All over. You put those down. Father, you know our hearts, Lord, and I pray that you would help us, God. We all we have this role of flesh. It's not going anywhere. It's not getting any better. But, Father, we'll walk close to you and stand your word, Lord. We can have victory. We can't do something unholy and something holy at the same time. It just doesn't work. And, Father, we'll seek to live for you and honor you, Lord. It'll be so much easier to say no when that temptation to do wrong pops up. And it's not the devil. It's not always an evil spirit, Lord. It's just coming from within us, as James said. It, the, the blame lies solely on us. And Father, help us to guard against this. Help us as parents to understand how this works so that with our children, we understand the dangers of the just try once. I know you'll like it mentality. Father, help us to be wise, and I pray you just help us have victory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads about eyes closed. Dan's going to play. Let's take a moment and talk to the Lord. Maybe God spoke to your heart about something. If so, you are going to pray about it. You are going to say, Lord, help me with that. God, give me that. Lord, I beg you to say, Lord, there's, there's been something, Lord, you know I've tried. You know I've tasted it. I've been there. But God, help me to, Lord, to have victory over that. You are going to talk to the Lord this, this evening. And ask God to help you. Brother Ken, old ladies, how about a teenagers, young people? What desire do you already have? there. You know what's there. You, you know if you like lobster or tiramisu or whatever it is. You know. You are saying, God, help me, Lord, forgive me for even trying it. And Lord, help me to lose that taste for God who can just make it bitter to me. Let's talk to the Lord while the piano plays.
drinking hard liquor in the car with an adult that shouldn't own them. Uh, very foolish, very foolish. And uh, so be careful, parents. I'm telling you, the taste doesn't even have to be the end. If we don't try it, I never try lobster. I don't know if I like it or not. But you give me something I like, and I'm going to know if I like it or not. And so just be careful. Be wise. Be wise. All right. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. I know it's a heavy message, church, but uh, I really think it's, it's a process if we understand going forward we can really have some victory in our life and really help our kids out and uh, for them going forward and not to deal with some of the junk that we deal with. Amen. All right, let's pray. We're going to be dismissed. Brother Joe, would you pray for us at the head?